First, I'm gonna show you how quickly you can flip the switch on these transitions, even if you're a beginner. And then we will activate advanced mode and move on to some cool customizations and make these look and feel truly your own. But the same basic ideas apply to DaVinci, Final Cut, Premiere, After Effects, or whatever you're using. Okay, here's how I'm gonna to prove to you how easy it is to use these transitions. I am going to install a program that I've never used in my life. I'm usually an Adobe guy and I am literally installing Resolve right now. Does anyone ever read that stuff? Don't look, password. All right, let's open it up. I'm nervous. Alrighty, okay. Well, uh, media pool. So I guess that's where I drop and drag stuff. All right, let me just grab some footage that I used in the promo. What do I do? Do I drop and drag it? Wow, it's kind of confusing that you've got two views, but that's actually kind of cool too. So far, we have just one clip cutting to another clip. So let's spice that up a bit. Letterlink comes in six tasty folders. Maddie's favorite ones seem to be these faux film ones that I made. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto the timeline. Now what we have to do is find blending modes in this program. <laughs> Um, I have no idea where to look. Man, Inspector. Ooh, what's this? Ah, it was hidden. Composite mode, great. They're white on black. I would usually use a screen blend mode. There's a difference blend mode, which I've used a bunch. That looks really cool. All right, let's just use additive for now, right? So now when we play it back, so say where that flash is, we might want to just shift this up a little bit so that now that's over the top of the cut. I'm not going to lie. I know everyone complains about Premiere, but so far DaVinci on my machine, and it's a great machine, I must be doing something wrong because it's not playing back as smoothly as Premiere. Someone tell me in the comments below. Don't tell Maddie. This is not Maddie's fault. He knows everything. I don't. All right. Can you see that? It's playing back super jagged. What am I doing wrong? And that's literally all it takes to flick the switch. You drop and drag, you change your blending mode, and you're good to go. One of the things that I've included is these little color burns. Whoa, that's cool. Check that out. Oh, come on. How cool is that? Yeah, that's... That's fire. I'm happy with that. That's how easy it is for someone who has literally never opened the program before. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself a bit. Let's go right back to the beginning. So you've downloaded the three Letterlink transition zip files. It's in three folders because I didn't want it to be massively huge for you to download. Let's put them all in the same folder because this is already annoying me. What you find is they all have different looks. So you've got Japanese. If we go to binary, you've got some numbers there. Esports is kind of like fun letter things that are going on. And then exclamation is exactly what it sounds like. Extra characters there, some flashy looks. And liftoff is kind of your Euro style font numbers, you know, kind of like a late fifties bond look, something like that. Um, and then uh, actually, some of them, these are some of my favorites. That's pretty cool. And then Maddie's favorites are these faux film ones. So um, like film headers and film leaders, they're pretty flashy. And those will be, I think, the most popular. Uh, and then there's also some details, which I can show you. Um, you know, like you can just overlay that because it's nice and long. Um, the same here. What have we got? Just kind of a top and bottom look. So rather than it being a transition, it's just kind of like a constant overlay that loops. Uh, and then down here, we also have some color burns, which I will get to later. To flip the switch, all you need to do is drag these into whatever editing software you're in. Let's open Premiere. So I'm just gonna grab these and drop them in. And this is the same for, you know, whatever program you're in, DaVinci, whatever. I'm gonna call this Leather Link. I'm gonna double click and open that up. Uh, so say we wanted one of these faux film ones. Let's make that a bit bigger. On the timeline here, I've got two clips. It's literally just two shots that I used in the promo. Just a little three second there. And I can grab literally any of these. So I'm just gonna grab one, drag it on, you know, kind of line it up so it's near the middle-ish. And then, um, you know, at the moment, it just cuts to black. So we're gonna use a blending mode. So in Premiere, we're gonna go to our effects controls for this clip, let me double double click on that, go to effects controls. And this is where your blending modes are here under blend mode. Um, in DaVinci, it's called composite. And here's where it is in Final Cut. 
and this is where it is in After Effects. But back here in Premiere, we're gonna scroll this down and we can see every blend mode or composite mode that we can get. And most of the programs have exactly the same ones. And the one that I recommend for these is Screen, but we'll have a look in a bit at some of the others and what they do. So let's click Screen. And what that's done is it's made all the black opaque and all the white still show up. So now when we play it back, just has that little flash that kind of takes your eye. Say that I liked this, but I want to try something else. Instead of kind of dragging another one of these on top or something like that, and then needing to do the blend mode again and all that, another way you can do it is you can hold down Alt, then click on the clip you want to replace, and then drag it on top, and then it just automatically replaces it. So now when I play it back, it's automatically got that. Let's try it with something else, like a completely different look. Let's go to Japanese maybe, and we'll just pick one, and we'll drop it on top with the Alt click, and it'll play like that. Okay, let's look at some ways you can activate advanced mode. So say that, um, you know, that just takes a little bit too long. It's a little bit too slow. So a few ways that we can spice it up is we can change the speed of it. So in this case, 50%, uh, <laughs> this is confusing. In Premiere, 50% makes it longer, but in After Effects, 50% would make it shorter. So what we wanna do here is go 200% to make it half the length. And I'll just drag that back over where it was. And now let's watch it. So it's just a little bit more of a quicker transition. Let's alt drag another one on. So a lot more flashy. And then let's change the speed back to 100% to see what it was originally like. And there we go. So all of these transitions are one second long. Uh, a few of them might be a couple of frames more or less, but pretty much they're one second. And they're designed that way so that you can shorten them or lengthen them as much as you want. So this is an example of, say, something where you like the pace of it, but it's too long. So why don't we just shorten the front, shorten the back? Let's go to lift off, and I'll alt drag this on top. And again, the full length version looks like this which is pretty crazy and say I just want, you know, like maybe the last three. So I'll go to where it says three, I'll drag it to there and then I'll put it maybe in the middle or maybe even like where it goes to zero. So I'm gonna hit M for mark and then I'm gonna drag that there and it's gonna automatically put it there. So now that's a little bit shorter so you can speed it up or you can cut it shorter and don't forget if you want to you can also I don't know why you would need to with this one but you can just reverse it so now um, you know if I put that in the middle it'll count up to 10 in this case um, same with these faux film ones say there was a reason why you wanted this to go backwards well there you go it's now going backwards and then we want to put it back the right way around again. We just change it from reverse speed. The other way you can reverse speed is just to put a minus in front of your number. And that's the same as hitting that little button, that little toggle. So 100% there. And that one looks pretty cool too. Um, there are a few in here where you have like a white point. So say like this, for example, if I was to drag that on, there is a point where it goes from white to black, like there. And so then you might wanna just put a marker there and then drag that up. And now when it goes white is when the transition really starts. You can kind of see in there, that's where it's happened, like that. All right, so we were talking before about blending modes. Now I've suggested screen, uh, lighten or add. Uh, uh, other obvious ones for the white on black look, you can invert it by using multiply because they're just white and black. So we've kind of inverted that look. Another way that we can do that, if you for some reason wanted to invert it, you can use uh, an invert or a tint. So, so if I hit invert for that, it'll just invert it. Um, and then that will change it from black to white or white to black. And then again, multiply or screen are opposites. Inverting it can give you some interesting results. One I use a lot though is difference. 
which looks really cool. Everything that's white is black, everything is black is white, so that's a really cool trippy look. Uh, let me try different transition, just grab a random one from here and you can see what it looks like. So obviously it's giving you a little bit of that purple because there's some green in the trees. So those are the difference is a lot of fun and I use that a lot in the promo so you can kind of see that difference there. Uh, yeah, and just try them all out. So there's a lot of different ways you could do this, but my favorites are screen, multiply, and difference. We have something we like, but black and white is just a little bit too much, or we want to stylize it more. Let's look for a tint. And there's a lot of ways you can colorize your footage, but in Premiere, I'm just going to use a tint for now. So we can change the black to another color, say a hard red, and that'll kind of give us this kind of look. Or... We keep this black so that's transparent because we're using a screen blending mode. And then we change the white to, you know, that red. And now anything that is white will show up like this. And then again, you can start to mess with the blending modes for that. So now it's going to be a lot more of an obvious cut because of that. Uh, and then difference again, like that's pretty cool how it's changing. So say we change this to like a color that was actually in the image, like this green. Let's brighten that up a bunch like this. Wow. Okay. So that's a pretty stylized look if you wanted to go in that direction. Let's mute it a bit, a bit closer to the trees. So definitely mess around with mixing the colors and the blending modes. Um, you can use a tint because really the majority of these are just white and black. And so that means that um, you can select a color for black and select a color from white. Um, there are a few in the Japanese folder that are kind of like a, um, not this one, this one, that have some gray in it. Um, and when they have some gray in it, there's some interesting results there as well. Instead of using a tint like in After Effects, you can use a tritone to get a third color. But there's also these alpha versions, so let's drag one of those on. So now, I don't actually even need this blending mode. So it's showing through here, and you can see some of the glow is actually showing up as well. So you don't even need a blending mode there. You're still getting the black, um, but I could say change the black to red and the glow changes, but it's still, I still have full color and it's not showing through. You know, it's not, an, it's not an overlay blending mode. So then, you know, maybe if I change this to pink, so it's a, uh, you've got both those colors in there. Or if I wanted to do something that was a little bit closer to this project, I could say, you know, pick a green in the image, maybe brighten it up a bit and uh, maybe change this to, to the white again. So then, you know, it, it looks a little bit more like it's a part of the project. Uh, and I've got a few of these, it's number five as well. So that again, there's an alpha instead of a blending mode. So you can now have two colors, which might come in handy. I can change that white to black if I want. So those are pretty handy. So let's have a look at some of those details. Uh, for example, I'll just chuck a random one on here. Again, these are black on white on black. So let's use a blending mode screen. And now just down in the corner here, we've just got this little number ticker, which kind of comes in and goes out again. So it's just a nice little detail that kind of like spices up your shot. Here's one with both top and bottom. Kind of a sci-fi look. And this one's a lot longer than the clip is currently. And you know, th this is designed to kind of come in and come out, but as you can see, I've made this one a little bit longer. So say like you wanted it to continue to loop, you could just shorten that there, find out where it starts coming in here. And because of the way it animates, you would never notice when it ends and starts. Unnoticeable. Here's another one. 
just like a little number counter down the bottom. Just gives you that kind of moon landing kind of vibe. So those details are fun to play with and there's some of these Japanese details as well, which again, now I've got them in green at the moment. So they're just kind of more like a constant on the screen. Here's an even smaller version where it's on both sides. Let's do it in white so you can see it a little bit better. Just kind of a little bit of a flicker. And that loops so that it doesn't actually transition in and out. It just loops completely. Um, and then the last bonus folder here are these color burns. Um, you know, you could use these as a transition in and of themselves. And I'll drag this into the middle of the two clips. It's, it could be just used as a color burn like that if you wanted to. You could even add like a little kind of fade up on it, just like a short one so it's not quite as jarring. Maybe I'll make it a bit shorter. See how that's just like a little burn through. And then again, that screen you could try and lighten, which kind of gives you a different look. Burns it even harder, or the add or linear dodge in Premiere. So, difference. Whoa, that's really cool. So, you could just kind of go through like that. Um, and then, and then say you wanted to change this to a different color. Let's go screen again. Like you saw before, you can tint it, or we could alt replace it and these have different colors in them. So here's one that has a bit more color to it. So you see there, it's a bit, that's more of your traditional color burn. Number two's got more color to it. More, number three's more of your colder colors, blue, teal, purple. Four is similar to one, but in a colder color palette. So that's an interesting look there. Let's go After Effects, okay? So we're gonna drag that color burn on top of the transition. We are going to track mat pick whip the color burn to the transition. And at the moment, it's just showing the color. What we need to do is click this little switch to change it from alpha mat to luma mat. So now, whoa, whoa colorful times. Psychedelic craziness. Like say I took that burn and I didn't like that color. I can alt click. So holding down alt, drop it on top and it literally replaces it. Hey, maybe I go, oh, I don't like that. Let's chuck on a hue saturation and we'll like just scroll around the color. The sky's the limit on what is possible. If you have any questions, feel free to email us and we'd love to see what you make. So tag us on Instagram. Thanks for choosing Human Video Co.